Yo, <coughs> let's go with programming in Rust 2, Relative Dates Part 2. Auf Lesegucken lernt mit der IP 1.2.1.7.134 oder alternativ auch mit der Domain zilli.com. Basically, I misunderstood what I was looking at. The reason for this is that when you define a function in Rust, uh, by default you're defining it on the stack, I guess. Whereas when you define it in C sharp, it's being defined on the heap. I don't know if that makes any sense, but basically, I was trying to write code like this without realizing that here, this value. I don't know if that's big enough for you to see it. Probably not. This funk value here is uh, boxed. Whereas by default in Rust it would not be boxed. Was? Is there Rust scope? What? Anyway, the good news is that should make this a much shorter video than it was going to be. Because I've already written most of the code at least once. It's just that it didn't work the first time around. But that's probably a good thing. What we're going to get into tonight is um, a little bit more about how cargo works, a little bit more about how a more complicated project works, and uh, a little bit, not a whole lot, about how Rust testing works. I say not a whole lot, not because what we're going to do is ineffective, but because, well, I prefer very simple tests. There are a lot of different assertions you can make. I use exactly one. To me, that just makes the most sense. Everyone says, well, if you have an assertion like that's more descriptive for the user as opposed to Wholeheartedly. To me, they look almost exactly the same. I would not say that one is easier to understand than the other by any means. Yeah, it's actually, if you don't know what assert eek actually stands for, then the second one would be more obvious. Anyway, the whole concept makes more sense in languages like C Sharp, where we have uh, a little bit more descriptive domain specific language for that. Like, uh, I mean, yeah, that seems pretty obvious at the very outset, but is it any more obvious than I would say no. Whatever, to each his own. this project so that the code, the files, whatever, are in slightly different places. Um, personally, is mit dem sound los? Oder muted er sich? it doesn't make much difference to me, but apparently there are plenty of people who think that it's important to sort your stuff out this way, and even though I'm not one of them, uh, well, I'd like to show everybody how. Somebody was nice enough to show me how, I'll show you how. That's the way it goes. Nice. <clears throat> so what we've done here, um, using a ridiculous cryptic bash command. <laughs> Using a ridiculous bash command is, I think we have moved uh, the main RS file. 
file from the source directory, which is now empty, into also ich mache hier irgendwas richtig falsch, glaube ich. Das source den under the name reldate.rs. It's more descriptive, I guess. Um, description is a big thing in programming. If you can't convey what you're trying to do to the next program to look at your work, believe me, your work is going to die with you because you're just going to rewrite everything. After we do that, we have to update our tomato to make sure that the tomato doesn't lose track of what we were working Steht on. Steht das für Tomato eigentlich? Yeah. Oder kommt das von ihm? Ich habe keine Ahnung, wofür dieses Trommel steht. Tomato well, language. Looks like we don't actually for this. We have to update it for something else. Good thing we opened it, right? Well, let's test this out and see if it actually still compiles, huh? And it totally does, because I guess Cargo looks through the source tree for anything that looks like it has a main and just stitches it together. I didn't realize that. But, now I do. Learn something today. Here's what we do have to update the tomato for. Let's see here. What is a good name for this? How about that? What we're doing is we're going to create a library that handles the date stream math for us so that it's not necessary to put that code in our main source file. That way, we get two big advantages. First, we don't clutter it up with a lot of extra logic that's not actually related to but it's the in here per se. What the Second, that means that we can use this logic again in someplace else if we want to. Also, die Farm ist echt für den Arsch. Of course. This means that we have to actually make the file. Und dass er sich die ganze Zeit mutet, das triggert mich irgendwie. Here it is. Perfectly, entirely, completely empty. But, uh, that won't be the case for long. Remember earlier we discussed the necessity to use a third party library. Here's the library we're going to use, Chrono. This means that we're going to load Chrono into our library, and our main code won't actually even have to consume it. sort out some housekeeping nonsense. The reason I say that being, well, I didn't write Chrono, and you can only get so much out of the documentation, so we need to know how it works, which is a perfectly good excuse to demonstrate Rust testing features. several different items out of the chrono crate. And for once I know which ones because like I said I wrote this earlier. So slightly cheap. First thing we want to do 
is make sure that we can actually read the day of the week from the naive data object. Wo wusste mein Holz? There we go. Sort of. That's one test passed. So this establishes that the day of week Inu and the weekday Do what we think they do. Right, right. That one's pretty simple. It's about to get a little more complicated, unfortunately. I'll show you a little bit about Rust documentation here, real quick. Zu schwimmen. Boah. I'm not going to read all that out loud. I sound like crap anyways. But, if you've missed any of the previous episodes, that's a pretty good summary of what a relative date is. What this does, <coughs> is when you use a cargo doc to generate your documentation, it creates a website that actually includes all of that text. Uh, Interessant. Ein paar, ein paar Features sind schon spannend. Don't run cargo doc like that. Oops. Run cargo doc like this. That causes cargo doc to only document your code. Well, why it's documenting clap, I don't really know. <coughs> I wonder if it did. I can't actually tell. Maybe it did because we pulled it in as a Git repository, or maybe it did that just because we haven't compiled it yet. Good question. Um, Looks like it just did date stream, but I don't know. Yeah, okay, also, das ist, uh, funktioniert überhaupt nicht so, wie ich mir das vorgestellt habe. Also, eigentlich halt gar nicht so, aber. <lacht> Tja, 
stirbt der Junge gerade in seinem Husten. Was ist mit dem? Sorry, drinking my golf surfers. Oh, drinking. Ah, das sind die, die ich gar nicht will, gell? Ich will nur die an der Seite. Diese komischen Eier hier. Oder kann ich die an den Boden setzen? Nee, das kann natürlich sein. Aber ich brauche ja welche, die ich an der Seite habe. Ich brauche den Fan. So one of the things that I made use of in the intermission video that I showed you was a date range iterator. Uh, Rust doesn't have the ability to create an iterator with just a function. <coughs> Apparently that's peculiar to languages like C Sharp that have coroutines. I don't know what a coroutine is, but Rust doesn't have it. Ich will jetzt echt nicht haten, aber vielleicht sollte man das Video nicht aufnehmen, wenn kind of man gerade den härtesten Husten hat. Ein bisschen Zucker und ein spezielles Art von Struct, das ein Trade nennt, called Iterator. Now, Rust hat nicht ein built-in Struct of the kind that I'm looking for, so I'm going to have to make my own. Hä, hey, mehr als einer ist dabei nicht rausgekommen. This is a standard issue Rust documentation comment. Instead of uh, this one, Is like a Rust crate summary dot comment. Also, this is the one that I'm making so. here has three, three slashes instead of two and then an exclamation point. Basically, this indicates that it's a documentation for a struct or a function. Leute, kommt hier rein. Yep. Alright, so basically I'm saying date range iterator is an infinite generator starting at C value and heading up or down in either direction. Oder Magma Blöcke gehen die auch von unten? A particular way, I'll show you. Also warning the uh, consumer that if you're going to use this, you should probably apply your own bounds using either take or take while in your uh, iterator stream.
second thing that I'm going to do here is implement iterator for my brand new structure. That's kind of necessary because we haven't really defined a whole lot of it yet. We've defined uh, a generic structure with a parameter so, F. <coughs> that nothing about. So let's go ahead and get in the meat of this so that you can start to understand what we're really talking about. since when I read it. I'm not entirely convinced that it does, but uh, one funny thing about the, and by funny, I mean I've never seen it in any other language before. I know the dependent types exist in some other type systems like uh, Scala, probably also in uh, Haskell, which is where most of the rest of the type system came from, but I've never actually seen it before because I only worked in C Sharp and uh, like JavaScript. Yeah, so gehen die doch auch. Basically, um, ich check nicht, welche sind dann iterators work on a type item. Once upon a time, they were generic. They're not anymore. Um, so for any iterator, we have to define the type of the item right here. Oh, And that's how we do stark that. Stark how you We also have to create... Uh, well, it's not public. It's, an, it's a trade implementation, so it's going to be public no matter what, I think. We also have to implement this next function, which is what the uh, language actually uses, or what the iterator trait uses to uh, expose the next value in a series repeatedly. Wieso? Kann ich da nichts draufsetzen? gar nicht so wie ich mir das vorstelle. Warte, brauche ich hier vielleicht einen Block? Schwimm nicht. Ah. implemented on all of his date-like types for uh, the duration type from Rust's standard line. I'm not sure what the story on this is. I think that the guy who wrote Chrono might actually be the person who created the duration type and then Rust picked it up. Uh, the reason I say that is that there's actually an issue on his uh, website where, uh, well, let's see if I can find it. License to MIT ASL2. Rust is potentially going to pull duration into mainline. Future push transitions will be easier if the licenses agree. So uh, he changed it from MIT to a dual license, MIT and APL2. It's really cool, actually. Props to this guy, because, uh, yeah, awesome. What can I say? So, what we're going to do here is uh, to check that with the duration and assign that to this return value. I'm not going to return it yet because I have more work to do in next before I actually do that. Um, specifically, the work I have to do is this. Well, let's just 
Let's do this one. If statement. If. Now this is a uh, new stuff to run. I don't necessarily know if that's going to work or not. Because I'm not sure, and I wasn't sure about this earlier, I found out and then I forgot, excuse me. I'm not sure what happens when you unwrap um, an option value like that. I don't know if it consumes the option value or if you still have an option value to work with. But we need one to work with because we're returning it right here. But up here, if it contains something, we're unwrapping it to assign it to self i, being the iterative value. Struct right here. So it's kind of a cross your fingers sort of moment. Uh, well, undeclared type names everywhere. First thing first. Braucht die ja gar nicht zwingend am Tod. Die sterben ja sowieso. Also von daher. Weiß ich echt nicht, was ich hier mache. Oh, that's not going to work, is it? We just did that totally wrong. What are you thinking? Uh, I need naive date because, well, I don't think we have it here. I don't need weak date yet. All right, so, um, actually, this is supposed to be something else. Totally. Just something else entirely. So, um, return value equals. Self.f being the uh, incrementer function uh, applied to self.i being the iterative value. That should return the option value that we use there. <coughs> okay, I think I have my two stacks fast together. That's a little better. Uh, associate items are um, not allowed in inherent implementations. It's the uh, second time. I forgot I wrote that wrong. Hold on. <coughs> so, what we're actually um, supposed to write here. Ja, komm, ein paar sammle ich jetzt noch. Wie lange dauert das Video noch? Ewig. Okay, dann äh, sammle ich jetzt nicht weiter. Also das war ein ganz großer Flop, dieses Projekt hier. Aber, naja, mehr oder weniger hat es noch funktioniert. And now it compiles. There's one more thing I'm going to do just to make our job a little bit easier later on. And that is I'm going to implement the data rate generator itself. Well, write a few quick uh, function implementations for data rate generator. auch interessant. Ähm ja. Also Bomb hier kann ich mal hier lassen. Uh, the main things we're going to do here is uh, just constructors. Uh, first of all, a constructor that just gives you a range starting with today. And then second a constructor starting with arbitrary date. Um, we don't absolutely have to have the arbitrary day one. We do have to have the today one because the default behavior of the application is to start with today. The from date constructor is going to be necessary for testing, if nothing else. Oh, ich wollte Holz holen, ja. Habe ich überhaupt noch Holz hier? Da habe ich vielleicht sogar ein Seed. Kein 
sieht kein Holz. Krass. From date, but with the current date passed in. Ja, okay, dann lassen wir den Scheiß hier zurück, weil wir erst noch schauen, ob das Wichtige ist noch hier gelassen ist. Ähm. Ja, ist hier irgendwas Wertvolles drin? Nicht wirklich. Die Eimer sind ganz schön, die brauche ich eh die ganze Zeit, aber die kann man auch. Kann man auch eigentlich hier lassen. Also. Ja, hi. I'm going to take a cough drop. That is my evil plan right there. Sorry about all the racket. Also ich fand irgendwie in den Folgen davor hat er irgendwie besser erklärt. Also irgendwie, ich bin jetzt voll disconnected. Ich schaue ein bisschen rüber, aber mh, bin ich mir so überzeugt von, von J.M. Archer wie davor, ne? This means we can write our second test. Oops. Um. Oh, ich habe alle Sachen, die ich eigentlich holen wollte, hier gelassen. Voll gut eigentlich, gell? <lacht> <lacht> Leute, kann mich bitte jemand retten in dieser Welt? K kann mich bitte jemand retten? Hilfe. Oh Mann, hey. Okay, ich brauche noch ein paar Minecarts. Ich weiß natürlich nicht, wie man Minecarts baut. Toll wie ich bin. Wahrscheinlich eine Eisenschüssel, hoffe ich einfach mal. Und ein Eisenboot sozusagen. Ich nehme an, dass das der Fall ist. Hm. Haben wir überhaupt noch Eisen? Nicht wirklich. Fairly simple code. Um, creating a new date range iterator. <coughs> Based on a naive date of today, or what was today, 47 minutes ago. And uh, an iterator function, or an incrementer function, that does a checked out of one day for each new value. I'm taking five of those and collecting them into a vector, which means that I can compare them against this. wahrscheinlich unten mal ein größeres Wasserbecken right, machen. Five, and, uh, Aus Sicherheitsgründen ist oft, wie ich da springe und irgendwann werde ich echt noch sterben, weil es halt echt nicht so safe ist. How long is this month? This month is miraculously 31 days long. Uh oh, 
fail to resolve. Give you two guesses why. One does not count. Super 8. Oh, ich hätte auch Kabelstone mitnehmen können eigentlich und den mal da ablegen, einfach nur. another trick for you. You see this where it says warning function never used main? Of course it's not used, we're testing it. So why would I care? Well, because it's going to give you that annoying warning every time. That's why you care. So here's what you do. A lot of people will come in here and they'll try it. Which I'm sure works great. I don't know, let's see if it does what I think it does. Yeah, totally does what I thought it does. Um, but that's not really the way that I prefer to do it. Because that just looks so much cleaner and it has exactly the same impact. So I don't know. expecting to have that assertion fail, however. I wonder what it's actually doing. Let's see if we can make this thing print something in a test. I don't know if we can or not. range be inclusive at the lower bound and exclusive at the upper bound in theory. I mean there is no upper bound but basically what I'm saying is you know if you're gonna take a while it's not equal to something you're not gonna get the last one. I don't care. But what it's actually doing is the lower bound is exclusive. So let's see if we can figure out why that is. Turn value is being set right here to um, the incremented value. Yes. What's a good way to get around it? Well, actually, I know a good way to get around it. It's just a lot of typing. Well, let's go ahead and do it anyways. This has to be an option instead of just an IV date. <coughs> We're going to have to change this in a lot of places, I'm pretty sure. Um, well, just one so far. It's good, right? Das brauchen wir auch. Ah, da, die kann man eigentlich meinen gehen. Die brauchst du nicht selber craften. Richtige Eisenverschwendung. Irgendwo war das sicher ein Minenschacht, den ich kenne. Ähm. Um. 
main issue is that we end up having to rewrite this particular um, function basically from scratch. Um, match self dot iterative value If our iterative value is already none, that means that the increment failed last time around, and we don't care. There's no work to be done. We just tell them, sorry, there's nothing here. Get over it. If it's not none, oh, sticky piss that means box we have work to do. Mm. So, uh, <sighs> I hope that works. It makes no sense in these new cards to take it away. Well, actually, we could do this. Then um, self i is equal to i dot uh, checked no. function i and just get back to return value. Hmm. Wo kann man denn jetzt eine Slime-Kiste hinmachen? Alright, uh, it wants a reference to i, not i itself. I'm trying to use the right words for these things. I mean, I don't necessarily know the right words, but I'm giving it my best shot. It just seems like, you know, the least I can do, right? Right. <coughs> Here's an interesting fact. It seems like if the test doesn't fail, it doesn't bother printing the output. They're running two tests. I don't see anything about dates in here. That's pretty neat, actually. I don't care what the output is if it passes. Something like that. Anyway, what this means is we now have a working date generator function. And if you watched the last episode, then you know why that comes in handy. Um, let me pull up the code real quick. That is the wrong file. <coughs> this is the C sharp relative date code. This is the execute month command uh, function. We start with enumerate dates, then we call enumerate dates again, and yeah. We do a lot of data enumerating here. We enumerate uh, to get the months, right, in the first place. And then for each month, we select uh, all of the um, weeks in the month. The, uh, what is it called? The relative date monthly command, like a third Tuesday of every month, is easily one of the most complicated pieces of code I've ever actually written. And, and I've, uh, don't take that as me exaggerating too much. Because everybody's written complicated code for little toy projects, right? For, for goofy things like, uh, hey, I'm going to re-implement this algorithm that everybody knows, and blah, 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 blah. It takes them two and a half hours to type it all, but really they're just taking uh, ideas that somebody else figured out a long time ago and then typing them into the screen, right? And, you know, the funny thing is at that point they're also re-implementing something that somebody else already implemented in their language, I'll almost guarantee it. Uh, but like real working code, real working code that does useful things at a business or 
for some government entity, whatever. Usually just dirt simple. Usually, absolutely just if else done. So, yeah, this is so seriously, true. that stupid mud thing is at least as complicated as everything I've done at work in the past six months. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, this may be the last video, well, not the last. When I was, <clears throat> well, all right, here's the plan. The next video is going to be a lot shorter. This one was shorter. I like that. It's 46 minutes so far. Uh, next video is going to be like five minutes because what I'm going to do is I'm going to get something. I don't know what. Not open broadcaster, obviously. But uh, something running on my actual Linux development machine. Hey. And I'm going to show you guys what the, uh, the documentation for Rust looks like when you generate it using Cargo Doc. Fortune 3, ein Diamant. Because I can generate it here, and that's all fine and good. But, uh, clearly, you can't see it here. I don't have a web browser that runs in here. I mean, I do, but it doesn't show anything that has JavaScript in it, so you're, you're just SOL. Sorry. Um, but, this completes the testing episode, and next episode we'll implement the actual library functions and that means that we can fill in this part here and well then I'll have something to show you in the documentation so maybe we should do that video before the documentation video well we'll, we'll plan on that all right I've wasted enough of your time 47 minutes 35 seconds Thank you for watching. Subscribe, say hi, complain about something, tell me I did something wrong, anything you want. Uh, see you next time. Ja, das war's dann auch für uns. Oh. Ja, ja, ja. Nein, abbrechen. Oh, jedes Mal kämpfe ich mit YouTube. Kennt ihr das? Wenn ein Video vorbei ist und ihr einfach nicht noch eins sehen wollt, ah, man kann Autoplay ausmachen, oder? Leute. Autoplay ist aus. Okay. <lacht> Ja, wenn man Sachen manchmal laut ausspricht, Rubber Ducky ist da. Äh, ja, genau, das war's dann auch wieder mit der Episode hier. Das wäre äh, JM Archer mit ähm, Programming in Rust, Folge 2, Part 2. Ähm, mit dem Titel Relative Dates. Und wir sind hier auf Laserguckenland, in dem Anarchie-Server. Um, ja, Vanilla Anarchie-Server. Und. Dann sehen wir uns in der nächsten Folge wieder. Ja, ciao.